the North Central Texas Council of Governments, in association with the North Texas Grease Abatement Council, present Cease the Grease, the Apartment Edition. This film intends to inform our residents about a very costly problem that affects everyone. Fats, oils, and grease, also known as fog. These three little words have a huge impact on our daily operations. Did you know there are more than 10,000 miles of sanitary sewer pipeline in North Central Texas? More than 7 million people live in the DFW Metroplex, and approximately one-third of our residents live in apartments. Millions upon millions of dollars are spent annually on sanitary sewage overflows, and the majority of those overflows are due to grease backup. We asked a few ordinary people what they knew about fats, oils, and grease. Let's take a look and see what they had to say. I don't believe I've ever had a, any plumbing problems. No, I have not. I have never had uh, clogged pipes before. Actually, I'm having a backup uh, plumbing problem right now in my bathroom sink. I usually put like water or soda. Leftover food, like big chunks of food. Liquid like coffee, water, juice. Drinks, coffee, sodas, and whatever is left over on the plates. I usually just put leftover liquids down my drain. There's been a couple of times that I put oil. I think the water goes to the city to get clean. Down the pipes to the drain, I don't know. I think it goes to the city to get clean. I really don't know where it goes. We all use modernized plumbing throughout the day. Because it is used so often and we rarely experience problems with it, most of us take it for granted. There are a few main components to most water systems. The blue pipes represent our drinking water supply. This water is delivered from a treatment facility through a series of underground pipes. Once the water is released from the home, it enters the wastewater system, represented in this illustration by the gray pipes. In typical situations, wastewater is carried to a wastewater treatment facility, but on occasion, problems occur which can divert this flow. When fats, oils, and grease collect inside of pipes, they can restrict the flow of water. When this flow is interrupted, there can be severe consequences to the system and your home. Wastewater continues to come from homes and apartments, even when neighborhood sewer lines are clogged, resulting in sanitary sewer overflows. Our stormwater systems empty directly into local rivers, lakes, or streams. A sewage backup near a stormwater inlet would allow untreated water to mix directly with the water in your local rivers and creeks. An overflow of this nature would introduce pathogens into our surface waters where we swim, fish, boat, and play. Let's see how else we might be affected by the improper disposal of fog. Meet Chad. Like most of us, he gets up early and works hard all day long. When he gets home from work, there's nothing he enjoys more than taking a nice long shower while listening to music. For the most part, he repeats the same routine. But today, something will be different for Chad. For some reason, the tub is clogged and water is backing up. Quickly, Chad turns off the water, hits the lights, and is out the door to visit the apartment leasing office. Upon being greeted by the apartment manager, Chad explains that his tub is backed up and that he cannot take a shower. His frustration is obvious, but the manager is quick to explain the situation. The pipes are backed up due to the fact that some residents continually pour improper materials down their drains and toilets. Specifically, fats, oils, and grease are the primary cause for this backup and many others. The actions of a few individuals can negatively impact everyone in the community. If this continues to happen, the apartment may be forced to increase rent to cover the cost of repairs and cleaning. In order to prevent future occurrences, she urges him to properly dispose of fats, oils, and grease. Accepting his plight, but still dissatisfied, Chad returns to his apartment to wait. Let's look at a few things that do and do not belong down the drain. Fats. Meat products like ground beef, bacon, and chicken definitely do not belong down the drain. Oils. Oils of all kinds, including cooking oil and motor oil, need to stay away from all drains. This includes any oil-based food product. Grease. Grease from bacon, sausage, or any other meat product should never be put down the drain. Few things will ensure clogged pipes faster than allowing this to happen. Liquids. Liquids like juice, milk, soda, and water are typically fine for any type of drain. Household chemicals. It's always best to check the label first, but some cleaning chemicals are perfectly harmless to the plumbing lines. Home chemicals with labels that say hazardous, flammable, corrosive, reactive, warning, or danger should not be poured down the drain. It's best to avoid putting fog or food scraps of any kind down the sink. 
Let's see how others might be affected by the improper disposal of fats, oils, and grease. Meet the Alvarez family. Joe and his wife Maria enjoy spending time with each other and having an occasional cookout with the kids. This, like so many other families, is how the Alvarez's relax on the weekends. As mom and dad prepare the meal, the kids are off to play. Everyone gathers around the table. It's just about time to eat when loud noises interrupt their peaceful meal. Unwilling to sit by while their meal was interrupted, they decide to investigate the source of the disruption. Upon arrival, the Alvarez's discover a cleanup crew working over an open manhole. As they cautiously approach, the crew's foreman greets them. Politely, Joe and Maria ask what the crew are doing and why they have to listen to the noises coming from their truck. The foreman explains that they are clearing sewage lines blocked by grease buildup. In fact, they are commonly called to the same location to fix the same problem over and over again. The Alvarez family wants to know how this has happened. The foreman tells the family that the backup is due to people putting fats, oils, and grease down their drain instead of disposing of them properly. As the foreman is explaining the situation, both Joe and Maria realize they may be partially to blame. They thank the foreman for helping them understand the situation and return to their cookout. Once the crew has cleared the blocked pipes, wastewater flows to the nearest treatment facility. These plants are responsible for treating our wastewater and releasing it back into a natural water environment. When the water first comes into the facility, it is passed through these bar screens. The bar screens extend over 90 feet underground, constantly rotating and raking through debris in the water. From here, the water is passed to the primary clarifiers. The clarifiers store large amounts of wastewater while skimming grease from the top of each basin. These are the main devices used to remove grease during the treatment process. Once the grease is collected here, it is then sent to a grease concentrator by a pump station. At this stage, lime is added to the grease, which makes it much more suitable for landfill applications. The grease is then hauled to a local landfill for disposal. Further down the process, the wastewater is fed oxygen by jets in a series of pools like the one shown here. Oxygen is used to help support the existence of waste-eating bacteria. These bacteria literally consume the waste in the water. In the secondary stage of treatment, water is stored in large channels while mechanized bridges rake matter into waste troughs. The water is passed through filters to bring it up to 98% purity. Even in the later stages of treatment, grease is still being removed and filtered from the water. Chemicals are also used to dissolve the remaining grease. In the final two steps, the water is chlorinated to kill pathogens and then dechlorinated to protect aquatic life. Once the treatment process is complete, the water is aerated once more and then released into a local river or sent via pipelines and used for irrigation. All major metropolitan areas have treatment facilities similar to the one we just visited. Their methods of treatment and release may vary, but no matter what the size or sophistication of the facility, they are all negatively impacted by fats, oils, and grease. We all know by now that fats, oils, and grease should never be put down the drain. But just what exactly should be done with them? Fats. Most solid fats are easily separated from food and should be thrown in the trash. Grease. Grease can be a little trickier to collect and dispose of properly. Bacon grease is perfect for this example. Once you are done with the pan used to cook the bacon, allow time for the grease to cool. Pour the cooled grease into a disposable container. There's typically still some grease residue left in the pan. Take a paper towel and thoroughly wipe the remaining grease from the pan. After these steps are complete, the dish may be washed normally. Oils. Filling the original container with used oil is preferred since it does not create any additional waste. Most major metropolitan areas have collection centers that will store your used oil until it can be recycled or disposed of properly. Check with your local collection center to see what is best for your area. Sinks, toilets, and drains of any kind are no place for fats, oils, and grease. If a small amount happens to find its way down your drain, it's best to use cold, not hot water, to assist the flow in the pipes. CeaseTheGreaseNTX.com serves as an online resource for data related to the proper removal, disposal, and reuse of fats, oils, and grease. Residents from any city in North Texas are encouraged to visit this site to gain insight and relative information. We want North Central Texas to be a great place to live. It's our responsibility to maintain and improve the quality of life for every one of our residents. Now that you know about the damaging effects of fats, oils, and grease, we encourage you to pass this knowledge on to your friends and families. With a little effort, we can reduce the amount of fog-related incidents in our sanitary sewer lines, as well as save hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars annually. Working together, there's nothing we can't accomplish.